Welcome back to the Podcrastinators. We watched the movie as per usual. This time, John Wick 4. Yep, we watched John Wick 4 today. Yep. Woo! Yet another installment and the final one. Pretty... Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Spoilers ahead. <laughs> yeah, really quick. If So John Wick does kill people in this movie, um, if you didn't know. Yep. Um, but yeah, on a serious note, spoilers ahead if you don't want it spoiled. Um, we will be talking about it because it is the final John Wick movie, which is a closing of an interesting era. Should we say that it's the final one? Is that, that might be a spoiler in itself. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think it's fine. I mean, it was kind of assumed it was the final one, right? Yeah, true. Had this... Just the ending of the movie made it conclusive. Yeah, they conclude his story. Mm-hmm. Which I think was a very good idea because of... The fatigue. Yeah. The John Wick fatigue. Because previously, the last time I watched all of them was when the third one came out. And having watched the trilogy at that time, I remember sitting in the theater during the third one. Like, yeah, I kind of get it by now. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And I think that this movie... There were parts during this movie where I was like, okay, let's get on with it a little bit, you know? I I have to agree, yeah. There's a certain point where you're like, yeah, everything that's going on is cool, but, like, I've seen it, you know? No, I mean, not to say, like, obviously they did a bunch of new stuff. This A lot yeah, of the exactly. stunts. A lot, I mean, a lot of the stuff they did were cool. You, came, you went to go see a John Wick movie, you'll leave satisfied. You saw John Wick kill exactly. people in fucking awesome-ass ways. You get exactly what you want out of a John Wick movie, but I'm glad that they're not... Gonna, like, keep milking it. But I think that the world is really interesting, and they're doing a spinoff, actually, with Anna de Armas. Anna de Armas. She's... I think it's called The Ballerina, and it's, like, set in the John Wick universe, but follows her, which I think... John Wick was an original idea ip exactly it, it first came into fruition through movie like through that movie yeah yeah yeah. the first john wick movie is like the first john wick thing ever it wasn't like a comic book or video game or novel before yeah. that it was an original film mm -hmm. which is very cool very cool i feel like it's i mean i guess they have to do a spin-off it's pretty successful and as long as they have the same people choreographing it like of that same like caliber, it will be, I mean, I'll watch it. Yeah. And what really sold that, the idea of further exploring this world to me was the cast of side characters mm -hmm. in this movie. Like all of the side characters were really fucking cool and interesting. And I'm like, yeah, that's it, a good point. Actually, that's, that's fair. The like Keanu Reeves is John Wick, but like, okay, wait, how am I, the, he doesn't like carry the movie, you know, or he does you don't carry. Think so he I see, oh, see, okay. okay so th this is where I was kind of thinking. I was like, so it's cool that they can do a spinoff and they have the people, the caliber of people working on it. As I've said, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. If they do something of that quality, it'd be awesome. But also John Wick is John Wick. It's like the same thing as doing like Harry Potter after the Harry Potter movies ends. It's like, yeah, like the world is cool and everything, but like, I don't know. It's like making Terminator without fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger or something, I guess. Yeah, but I thought that the the side characters in this movie proved to me that like... That it could be done. That it could be done. That like there there are more interesting characters in this world, not just, just John, John Wick. Just John Wick, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like Keanu Reeves does do a phenomenal job in this movie, but I think that the franchise can still be successful without him is basically what I'm saying. You know what I was thinking during the movie? I have uh, the formula down for a John Wick movie. <laughs> oh, I was also thinking <laughs> about this. You go first. Um, so it starts off and John Wick, besides the first one, is in a sticky situation and he has to kill his way out. And at some point he finds himself at a nightclub and then kills people. <laughs> yeah to house music for like 40 minutes. And then he fights a super strong guy at the end. <laughs> there's always the boss. Yep, and there's always the club fight scene. And, and they're always cool. I thought this was 
this did have to, uh, okay uh, even though it is a little bit of the john wick fatigue this movie did have two of my more favorite ones in recent memory with the john wick the one with uh the big guy that he fights at the club oh, the thought, fights yeah yeah i thought the big fat like i think he was german dude was a really cool fight that was a good fight and then the incendiary rounds when he was just yeah blasting people and the camera was tracking him through going through every room from like a top down angle that shit looked dope that shit was really cool like yeah it, nah, that one i agree that was really cool the um the fight in the big roundabout in london that yeah. was a standout for me as well. That was really fucking cool. John Wick got hit by a lot of fucking cars. <laughs> yeah, he, did. he got beat the fuck up. <laughs> he did. He got hit by a lot of cars. And then I also thought it was crazy how, okay, so we said he he does the fight in the nightclub, obviously, with the German guy. Mm -hmm. And it took so long for the general club goers to like react to what was going I on. I feel like they didn't react. There was a lot of scenes where they'd look, see him kill and they'd be like, hmm, and then just continue dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then it was like towards the end of the fight that like people started being like, oh God, and, like running away and causing mm -hmm. a panic. Yeah. And like same thing with that. Like, they're probably like, oh, another psychopath killing people. He'll get killed soon. And they're like, God, <laughs> no one's killing him. So that's another thing I was thinking about as like an angle you could go in with this universe uh -huh. is like someone outside of the assassin tribunal, you know, outside of this whole co the assassin community. Mm -hmm. I want to know how prevalent that is. Like how is, is it like a secret organization? Did like the, just the general public know about this crazy assassin society? And I think I mean, it would be cool. It's I don't know. It's I feel like there has to be like that level of like yeah, just don't think about that because John Wick did was in the middle of the streets with like thousands of people gunning people down. Any in all the movies that there's like when he's running through the streets in the last one. That's what I'm saying. Is like, does the general public know who John Wick is? I just want to know what the like the general public knows, and I think it would be cool to have a character be like a totally an outsider be totally an outsider and like find out about it mm -hmm. i think that that'd be like a cool angle to go through like and an introduction like the rising of the ranks as an assassin yeah that'd be cool and the uh well so the the mr nobody character that's kind of what i thought the angle they were going with at the mm -hmm. beginning when he was like looking through his notebook and there was the like insignia sketch drawing of like so, the high table logo and you, i thought he was like researching them you, you said you liked the characters yeah what did you think about that character mr nobody i thought he was really cool and you util utilize well but the the mr nobody like name itself just didn't do it for me you know like yeah it was a um, i thought it was fine I, th I feel like every like Honestly, whenever John Wick John Wick speaks, I'm like he had like I know John Wick is a badass, but he's he's just he kind of seems stupid, you know. <laughs> I know he he didn't really have that many lines in the movie. He I know that's does. not what it's about. Yeah, but. he never does, and I always find that funny because they're like, "What do you think, John Wick?" He's like, "I kill people," and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> there's only gonna be four people <clears throat> that get this joke, but John Wick is chungy." John Wick is chungy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a little reference to our D&D uh, &D campaign that we're doing. Yep. Uh, which we will be covering the D&D &D movie. And since we've been playing, I think we'll have an interesting take on it when that does happen. But regardless. Exactly. Or, shameless guess, plug. Shameless plug. Yeah. Uh, in other words, John Wick. Uh, so we had Mr. Nobody. There was What did the you think about Mr. Nobody? I, uh, I thought he was cool. I liked his dog. Yeah, he had a good dog. And the dog wasn't like, CGI. That's fucking yeah. huge that it was a real ass dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I felt like his, like you, the way, like I liked how you had like that thing where he pulled it down at the end and then like his body armor came down. That was cool. That yeah. was a good gadget. Mm -hmm. He seems, he was killing people in a different way than John Wick. Yeah, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Why, yeah. And I, th I feel like, so there, there was a, trailer for a movie done by the same studio that's like a nazi killing one and i'm not gonna lie i saw that trailer and i was like but that, that makes me pretty excited to see something not john wick doing it in this style 
Yeah, like a... Following the John Wick formula in a different setting. Yeah, in a diff- exactly, exactly. <clears throat> what was it called? It was called like Sisu. Sisu, I think, yeah. yeah. S-I-S-U. Mm-hmm. We'll potentially cover it. Could yeah, be a good movie. at some point. <laughs> Just like, we'll watch everything. We'll watch everything we'll- ever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll watch everything for the podcast. We'll get to it at some point. Um. So there's Mr. Nobody. <laughs> oh, the blind guy. Yeah, the... We had the John Wick Daredevil oh, Kane. crossover. His name was fucking Kane. Yeah. Because <laughs> he was blind. Huh. Yeah. The second time that Donnie Yen has played a badass martial arts blind guy, in my knowledge. Maybe he's done it more than twice. What was the other one? He was the blind guy in Rogue One that was like, I am one with the Force, the Force is with me, or however that line goes. It's been a minute since I've seen Rogue I think Rogue that's the one. right uh, saying. Yeah, but you know who I'm talking about? I know exactly who you're saying. He was like, Forrest Whitaker? No, it wasn't Forrest Whitaker. No, he was with Forrest Whitaker. Oh. Wasn't Forrest Whitaker with... Forrest Whitaker was in that movie, right? He was in that <laughs> movie, but I don't think they were together. Because Donnie Yen was with the other guy that had the like the LMG blaster. And... No, I don't remember. Fuck that movie. Besides the Darth Vader scene. That whole movie was worth just seeing that last 20 sec, like 30 seconds. You're like, yes, <laughs> give me yes. more of that. More Darth Vader. Slatter them, Darth Vader. Kill them all. <laughs> yes. That would be a fun one to watch for this. Um, anyway. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that Kane was really fucking cool. He was really cool. It took it took a minute for me to warm up to him because I was kind of like, he's blind. That's kind of stupid. <laughs> he's and, just daredevil. Yeah. And then after a while, I was like, okay, he kind of like moves. Around. Same thing with the Mr. Nobody. He was like moving around a lot more like shamlotly, more like. Yeah. Like more, even like, the, graceful, I guess, than John Wick, who's like feels like a, a tactical killer. Right. Yeah. And Mr. Nobody was like the homegrown, like with fucking fighting and then the blind dude was just like this carefree like oh i'm good yeah exactly they each all the fights were choreographed to the personality of the characters which was really cool you know what i feel i'm talking myself into a spinoff yes (laughs) yes i do i still do think the series will always have like when you think of john wick or anything it'll always be keanu reeves but i think it can I think it, I think it ways. can survive mm-hmm. for sure. And the the villain was really good. The villain was really good. Same thing with him. I had to warm up to him a little bit, but I did end up liking his character. They all had like everybody's motivations made sense, mm-hmm. and like you were kind of rooting for all the characters. Lawrence, Lawrence Fishburne's character is always the biggest homie in every john wick movie yeah florence fishburne is also incredible yeah he's dope (laughs) (laughs) fucking r.i.p lance reddick just gotta throw that out there he's yeah for real he wasn't he was only in like i guess he wasn't a good amount of the movie yeah he was in the first half of the first act yeah R.I.P. Super talented dude. Super talented dude. Now Netflix doesn't have their Wesker if they want to continue their Resident Evil show that got like two stars. Which, by the way, we just released two Resident Evil videos on the channel. So please go check that out. On the uh, Snake Meal channel. Yeah. It's in the description. Yeah, it'll be in the description. Yeah, but there's... Oh no, the Resident Evil show is not going to continue. Oh yeah, apparently it was fucking awful, but <laughs> I think that like the idea of Lance Reddick being Wesker, I feel like that's solid casting. Yeah, actually, no, I didn't hate that. Yeah, I didn't yeah, hate but... that. And I feel like they have that they he can pull that demeanor. Yeah, I think he'll be a good voice for Hellboy as well when that game comes out. Oh shit, yeah. Isn't so... it kind of what I f- weird connection but Cause fucking Kevin Conroy, his last appearance is in a video game too. That's true. I two feel act- bad. Two awesome <laughs> actors that have died recently. So incredible sad. actors. Yeah, it is. It fucking sucks. At least they have a sick legacy to look back on. <laughs> when exactly? And there's also on like on at least for Kevin Conroy, there's so much Kevin Conroy Batman. 
content. Like he yeah, did you so can get many your fill. things. He's but, done a lot of good shit too, which is like yeah. I mean, I get same with yeah, Lance Reddick. Did, um, did you know that he was he was Batman in live action? Kevin Conroy was. He got to be. It unfortunately it was in the CW Arrowverse. They did a Crisis on Infinite Earths storyline. Yeah, and he got to be Batman. He got to be Batman in an alternate universe, so he got to also appear as live action Batman, which is really cool. It's cool. He played. I mean, I'm about that, but you got to put a gun to my head to watch a CW fucking show that is one thing i will veto talking this whole episode has been yeah we want to talk about it we'll talk about it. i do not want to talk about the fucking cw verse what if it's what if it's like just that infinite crisis like story arc like the four episodes that if it's, it's like, like four episodes i could do it yeah because there are some cool things <clears throat> but if i had to watch six seasons of arrow i think i'd shoot myself <laughs> no i <laughs> yeah no, I agree. 22 episodes for those, like, the schlocky, like... Mm-hmm. It's or the made Flash. For... Did you ever get into the Flash? Well, so the Flash is what, like, killed my, like... I was into the Arrowverse, and the Flash is well, what killed it for me. Correct me if I'm wrong, the fucking first two or three seasons of Green Arrow, or Arrow, is pretty all right. So I watched up until the third <clears throat> season. That's when I fell off. The first season is actually really good i know you said you wouldn't watch them but like Mm -hmm. i would recommend watching the first season to be honest like okay it's live action green arrow and it's really fucking cool and they like integrate all the dc villains in a super interesting way and it's villains you've never seen before okay and ones that aren't normally popping up with everything exactly and it's the first season is super grounded it's all about him like uncovering the conspiracy of like why he got trapped on the island Mm -hmm. and because you know green arrows backstory no so basically he was this like he's he was the bruce wayne persona basically like he's like a playboy like millionaire millionaire billionaire and but he just like he was that, like, that's all he cared about was partying and yeah. didn't give a shit about anything. And he's he was, like, on a yacht with his father and a couple other people. And the yacht got attacked and he got stranded on an island for five years. Five years? Five years he was stranded on this, like, remote island. And when he comes back, he's, like, super fucking hardened from everything he learned on the island. Damn. And then he like comes back as Green Arrow. It, it is really cool, and okay. the the season is done in such a way where it, like, as the like main plot is going on, it does like flashbacks of like to him, like him on the island. Yeah. And in season two, you get <clears throat> it's a really good portrayal of Deathstroke. Deathstroke is the main the main villain for season two, and you find out I that, do like, love me some Deathstroke. He learned oliver queen like learned a lot of his skills on the island from deathstroke oh okay it yeah it's really cool damn (laughs) like the but so the reason why i fell off was because at a certain point he stops killing people because so in the first season when he's uncovering the conspiracy about like his ship being attacked and someone was take, trying to take over his company and all he's just that killing people bullshit. left and right and he's killing all the people he's responsible john, he's john for wicking it. them see we brought it back guys yeah we brought it back to john but anyway <laughs> so he's like killing the people responsible he's like fucking you failed this city and just launches an arrow into their chest and you're like damn it's really cool and then in the later seasons he's like oh i think i'm not gonna kill anymore and then it's like, okay, now you're just Batman. Yeah. And and the costume in the beginning is really cool too because instead of like having an actual mask, it's just like green paint on his face and he's got like the hood over it. So it, it, mm-hmm. it looks really cool. And then he gets an actual mask later and it just like gets yeah. a little corny. Do they have Red Arrow in it? Yes, Red Arrow is a thing. And, yeah. That's uh, cool. Yeah. It's... I. I don't know if he ever actually becomes Red Arrow, but they, I didn't watch long enough. He's definitely speedy. 
and he oh speedy that's right speedy is before red arrow yeah yeah when he's the sidekick yeah and then i can't remember if they did his like heroin arc but <laughs> that'd be interesting if they did well it's so integral to his character in the comics yeah i mean they didn't really do it in young justice but he has his whole air heroin arc. And I think that they mm -hmm. do do that in the show. I can't exactly remember, but that's a good yeah. part of his character. But then like once they add the flash in the greater DC the universe. The flash just became a meme and Supergirl, <laughs> just the CGI abominations that would show up on that show. Yeah. And the unfortunate thing about that is that I, the, okay. So I watched like the, I didn't even finish the first season of the flash and in later seasons, Kevin Smith direct directed a couple episodes. So I have seen those. I've mm -hmm. seen the Crisis on Infinite Earths because I wanted to see live action Kevin Conroy. Yeah. And yeah, I would say the first season of Arrow was 100% worth watching. Do you think, thinking about that era, do you think comic book movies have gotten worse or better or like still the same because obviously there was the fucking rise of the marvel during like phase two with like thanos and everything with endgame right but like even before that marvel was shit in the bed pretty hard marvel was shitting the bed pretty with, hard with shows and movies or i don't know if they maybe not shows but definitely movies the um, only like dc real... was struggling pretty hard but they had batman they had the nolan Batman. yeah they had the nolan batmans that yeah. i think the nolan batmans and some of the x-men films kept that like pre true mcu and and sam raimi spider-man huh yeah, maybe maybe it was a lot better back then <laughs> yeah i think it was actually better back then. yeah <laughs> now but now that you mentioned those <laughs> Well, also, we just have to slog through so much shit now. I know. You know what? I really think that the problem is the villains. Like, yeah. you just have to have more interesting... The whole point things. of superheroes is their villains. Like, right? It's like their whole relationship between them and, like, why they're fighting. Right? And that's the one of the really things that annoys me about the Marvel movies is that... They just die. Yeah, they kill off all the villains. Yeah. Why did MODOK have to die in Ant-Man? They even Very killed true. Kang. They even <laughs> killed Kang. Yeah, the one that they're supposed to bring back. It's like, wow, that the strong the guy we're supposed to be terrified of. Ant Man kills him, and it's really no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the problem in Marvel, like I think it would be a huge step in the right direction to just have better villains. And they're one hundred percent. They're I don't know what it is. Maybe it's like. The Disney overlords don't let them do like the the crazy evil shit. Like, I don't know. Kang didn't even really do anything that evil in Ant-Man. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty dumb. It's not pretty dumb. It's very dumb. God help us all if the Flash movie doesn't tickle my fucking <laughs> superhero itch. I know. That's going to be really disappointing. But it all comes in waves, right? Like, look at the Western. Look, that was a huge genre in yeah. the 60s, 70s, and just like you, so, uh, Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've thought about this too. Like, fucking, I wonder if this means that we'll have a new era of movies. Because we had, like, Westerns. I feel like New Wars maybe for a little bit. Mm -hmm. those like the over the top action movies of the 80s and 90s yeah yeah and now we have the 2000s superheroes like i think it will you think it started in like 2000s i mean when, sure. when, when did spider-man come out 1999 um 2002 i oh, think okay. is sam Raimi spider-man one of the very first live action marvel big budget marvel movies that had a lot of praise and hype was blade oh shit blade is awesome <clears throat> it doesn't feel marvel dude exactly. that's that's the fucking thing right like it's like i guess they have to upkeep a brands like that's their fucking mo but and there's so much cool shit in marvel blade is aren't they they are redoing blade aren't they they are doing a blade movie and apparently 
It's lost its director. It's apparently been like a, a complete nightmare of a pre-production so far. Oh, well, that's because Disney instills confidence. Is Disney trying to nerf it? And they're like, come on, you can't do Blade without a little bit. It's like, of... did you see Blade 2? Like, that shit was awesome. <laughs> right? Like, <clears throat> I don't know. Apparently, the, the Blade movie is having a troubled production right now. Damn. But. Hey, that, that is another thing. Wesley Snipes. Too OP is Blade. Too OP is Blade. It's like Hugh Jackman with Wolverine. It's like, nah, he, he's Blade. <laughs> <laughs> he's Blade. But there were also some of those other, there were the live action adaptations of Marvel. There was like a, a 1990s Captain America movie where he has the, like he has a bike helmet basically. Have you seen those pictures? I have seen that. And then there's that live action Fantastic Hulk, Four yeah. movie that oh, never got about- released. The Hulk show too was there's the Hulk off. show in the seventies. Oh, I'm, that was that long ago, shit. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to think of like live action adaptation or a live action films. That's what I'm thinking is like Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck, which you, is a Lucas film production. Have you ever watched crazy. it? I have not watched it. It's a weird movie. There's duck to yeah duck titties in it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's a weird movie i wonder what the like oh whatever wonder what the very first live action marvel adaptation is but it might be howard the duck i think it is i think it is howard the duck in movie format in in movie format as a feature film Mm -hmm. because one of the first like shows was the japanese spider-man which was is the like the birthplace of power rangers which is crazy yeah (laughs) That is pretty awesome. That Spider-Man played an instrumental role in the creation of the Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how much like I th- this episode is no longer be a bit about John Wick, but I mean, yeah, it's hard to t- what do you want us to say? Like he killed people. Haha, ha, that one way he killed the guy was cool. Ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in a lot of the things that are popular, it feels like such a broad term, but specifically did you know Marvel was like super instrumental in creating Transformers as well? Mm-mm. So yeah, when they, so Transformers toys were Japanese toys originally. And they fucking, I don't even know if it was Hasbro at the time, but whoever, some toy company saw these toys in Japan that could transform into robots and vehicles. And, and the like, whole idea gotta- was like, we got to get that shit. We got to get that shit to the U.S. That would be fucking crazy. And so in an, in order to sell the toys, they wanted to create a children's cartoon based on it. And so essentially, since the dawn of time, Transformers... It as a concept has just been an advertisement for toys. Wasn't that was like the majority of cartoons in the eighties? Was he, advertisement for He Man toys. too, right? Ninja and Turtles, G- GI Joe. Then Ninja Turtles was the nineties, but still same sort of thing. Yeah, uh, different time, <laughs> different time. And so when they were, because so, the, since are, the toys are, we, existed we, first, there was no backstory. So the whoever was like bringing them over went to Marvel and they were like, can you develop the backstory for the Transformers? And Marvel did a, like a series of. They published or, Transformers for a bit. Yeah, yeah. I do know that. And those are some expensive comics. They're like the big names in Mar- Marvel at the time. Like I'm pretty sure like Jim Shooter created a bunch of Transformers characters like Optimus and Bumblebee and stuff. And mm-hmm. it's crazy that Marvel sort uh, sort of invented yeah. transformers like and they just it's isn't don't it i feel credit. like um with anything it's kind of wild how much you can like trade like trickle it back to like different properties and this is just thinking like we've been playing halo recent recently oh yeah and like seeing how like halo developed like the fps landscape and then led to like Basically, FPS is now. <laughs> yeah, Call of Duty yeah. is the big one. Obviously. Yeah, Call of Duty is the big one. Um, okay, you want to know something and, crazy? And fucking Resident Evil. Yeah, with Going four. into Devil May Cry. 
Oh, yeah. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. And Resident it, Evil as well with the over the shoulder third person exactly. controls. Exactly. Yeah. Like without that, we would never have had like The Last of Us, like any third person game. Honestly. I mean, may, not. It probably happened at some point, but, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, in. Um, so we've been playing the Resident Evil 4 remake and they added the crouch mechanic. Yeah. And. So I'm like, oh, I wonder if I can like stealth this whole section. And then I'm like, that's not really the point of this. Like if I want some stealth zombie shit, I'm just going to go play The Last of Us. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's stuff. no way to like lead them, you know? Yeah, exactly. So. I get caught by them a lot. I I'm do not get very caught. Stealthy. I'm not very stealthy. I kill like either. one and I'm like, all right, I'll walk up to him. And then he turns around right at the last moment. And I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> I, I, a video popped up in my feed that was like, 23 experiments in the resident evil 4 remake and a lot of them were like stealth based things so the first one of the one of the experiments was like how many ganados can you kill before getting spotted in in that very first sequence mm -hmm. before the bell rings and it was only two two ganados yeah that's like the guy you can't kill anymore that that's as far as the guy got i don't know how much testing he did but he like he he pretty much like tried to go around a bunch of the map to try and stealth it and he was only able to kill two of them before he got spotted. Oh, going stealth. I see. Yeah, going yeah, stealth. I'm, I'm fucking stupid. Yeah. And you know what part I did like in that? What? Remember when I first told you when I first played the game, you were like, Oh, I we were talking about that fucking intro scene in the village and I was like, Oh, I just climbed up the ladder and hugged the corner. Yes. And they just threw Molotovs and they never came up for me. And then in this game, when you climb up there, the floor collapses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was pretty cool. That, I agree. When I did the exact same thing when the demo came out. Mm -hmm. And that's when the demo ends, when the bell rings. And I ran up into the tower to try and do the same tactic. Yep. And I fell through the floor and I was like, oh, fuck. And I was like, okay, they know. They're flipping the script. They know. <laughs> yeah. So I agree. That was pretty cool. Um, and... In the experiments video, one of the other things is, can the Ganados see you when you're in the shade or like when you're in a darker area and mm -hmm. they can still see you. So yeah, the stealth isn't really that robust. So I, like I said, I'm like, if I want to do this stealth horror, just go play The Last of Us. Yeah. The Last of Us does actually have some good stealth. Mm -hmm. It's very, especially in the second one. I feel like it gets scary if you don't go stealth in the second one. Mm -hmm. or just play Metal Gear Solid the beginning of stealth games <laughs> the beginning of stealth games which probably made a million more games and yeah like Death Stranding <laughs> I love you Kojima I love you Kojima mm. yeah John Wick <laughs> yeah John Wick <laughs> uh, I feel like I have nothing else to say about John Wick. Yeah, it was really cool. It was a good movie. <laughs> you should go yeah. watch it. Yeah, it's John Wick. I mean, come on. Yeah, you're not going to have a bad time watching John Wick. Mm -hmm. They're well made. Uh, next episode is... So the next episode will either be Dungeons and Dragons or the Mortal Kombat Battle for the Realms. Okay. So one of those. <laughs> yep, one of those. Uh, thank you so much for listening. As always, check out our new stuff that we posted to Snake Meal, our YouTube channel. Yep. Uh, we've been doing some RE content. And yeah, thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>